Hi YouTubers, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about my 2015 KTM 690 Enduro R. I've had many people email me or message me just saying, what have you done? What have you done to this build? Well, it was quite a long build. I bought the bike in November 2019, just a few months before lockdown. And um, when I bought it, it was pretty much standard. It had the bash plate. It had, oh, just a, a minor couple of things. It had the Evo 1 conversion on the airbox, which was uh, running the paper filter. Um, and it had the full titanium Acropovic exhaust system, which um, to be fair, I'm glad it was on there because I, I don't think I would have spent 1300 pounds on it. But that was pretty much how I bought the bike. Um, since then it, it's evolved. It's evolved into the travel bike rather than an enduro bike. So I built this bike to do some journeys on. Um, the biggest journey I've done so far is to the Algarve and back with uh, Adam Lewis and Big Sky Riders. And we did around about 2,800 miles in three weeks and about 750 miles of that was, was on the trails. So starting at the back of the bike, I have the Rally Raid auxiliary tank that gives me an extra four and a half liters of fuel, which if I'm conservative, I get about 60 miles, which what's a hundred kilometers. Um, so in total, including the stock tank, that's 16 and a half liters. So around about 200 to 220 miles I can get from this, which is, uh, it makes it more usable on a travel. At the back also, I have the pre-run rack and top plate. This is great, it gives me a big surface area, it's solid. On the side here mounted, you'll see the Rally Raid soft pannier racks. Now I bought these pannier racks with a black auxiliary tank and all the fittings with the Rally Raid rack second hand on, on good old Evil Bay. So it didn't cost me as, as much as, you know, buying these things new. The rack I did buy new. Um, I've changed the seat to the seat concepts because yes, the stock seat, say no more. Uh, I've changed the filler cap to the 3D Moto um, one to replace the stock one to stop the dirt and crud and everything. Plus it means I don't have to use a key. Up front, I have the ADV tower, or sorry, the Nomad ADV tower. This has been fantastic. I put this on just before my trip to Portugal makes the motorways huge, hugely easy compared to the battering I've got with the, uh, the tiny little KTM screen. Up here, I've got the easy peasy 12 pounds from Evil Bay fold away mirrors. Um, I like the double take ones, but to be fair, at 12 pounds over a hundred odd pounds, these were an absolute no brainer. Uh, I put the Oxford hot grips on, I kind of like them, except they're a little bit larger than a standard grip, which when you have small hands like myself, actually after a while I find them quite hard work. But in the winter, in the rain, with a set of muffs on, I wear summer gloves all year round regardless. As you see, the bike's got a graphics kit on. The graphics have been done by Christian at Crispy Designs. Now, I gave him a rough idea of what I wanted and he got whatever was in my head out and he's put it onto this cracking cracking graphics kit, um, which as you can see from my t-shirt, is, is my logo, uh, works superbly. Down the bottom there, I have uh, the Adventure Spec bash plate. I have a Fat Bertha style brake, I think again was from 3D Moto. That's taken a battering on some rocks. Again, I think it was a must for this bike. The, the stock one bends like butter, it, it's absolutely horrendous. Um, moving on to the to the the wheels, I'm running standard KTM or Brembo discs. No need to change them. I run the EBC brakes in them. Again, they work very well. Um, indicators. I've stuck with the stock ones simply because I can't warrant spending the money on the LED ones. If I start breaking these, I think I've done two now, and I had some spares. I might then go down the LED route. Airbox wise. I have the standard air box. I have the Glugletech washable filter. It looks a bit like a K&N uh, in the style. 
Uh, it's washable in hot, warm, soapy water, biodegradable oil on it, and I've got the Evo One top cover. So my wading depth is still up to about here. So as long as the exhaust is out of the water, I can actually wade surprisingly deep on this. Uh, going to the suspension. I have standard suspension for around about seven or 8,000 miles and um, it was useless. You know, I'm 12 and a half, 13 stone without my kit on, plus with luggage, it, it, was, it was not good. So I've been to K-Tech, they put new fork internals for me, they put a stiffer spring on the back and revalved it so it, it actually damps. Um, I did a trip up through Wales recently and then I did the Sweet Lamb Baja style rally they do and it's transformed the bike. Now, of course, it's not as good as going down the route of a full race suspension, but for my needs, it actually works very well. And it was reasonable price. I think the whole lot came in at about 800 pounds um, and took about a week to get done. Tires wise on this, I'm running at the moment Michelin trackers, but I've, I've been through several different tires. That's kind of irrelevant because that's kind of stuff that you wear out, different conditions, you use different things. Uh, in the tower, I have mounted my Garmin Zumo 550, which is about, I don't know, 15 years old, but I use it for the fuel gauge and calculate my mileage and I can set what mileage it is for, for what I've got in the bike and then just keep an eye on that rather than waiting for the fuel light to come on. My navigation system I use is the Garmin Montana 700i. Now this is a new system to me. I've been running the 600T since I, I got it a couple of years ago, which has been fantastic. But the 700 works more like a touch iPhone, smartphone kind of thing. Do I like it? Not sure yet. Um, a few things that I'm trying to get used to. Uh, I've got no OS maps on it, unfortunately, just Topo. So that's something I've got to think about in the future, whether I keep this one or keep the 600 or 680. Uh, I run a, a tank bag, which is great because I can bring all my stuff in here, my gloves in here, my sandwiches or whatever else I'm using, cameras. Um, this is Giant Loop. It's been great so far, except it's not waterproof. So uh, I'm looking down the route of the Moscow hood one um just simply because it's fully waterproof whereas this this isn't and i have have to then put everything into a dry bag um i've added uh an sae cable down on the side here which i can connect a usb cable or my um uh, electric pump for the tires i've also got a usb mount up the front double usb i don't run my phone anymore on the bike i lost it on a mountain in spain so now I always keep my phone in my inside pocket, but if I want to, I can put it inside my tank bag to charge, but generally it's the phone stays <laughs> well safe after losing it. Uh, I've also fitted the KTM Adventure Pegs. Uh, big difference over the standard ones. Um, proper footing, takes a lot of the load out, takes a lot of fatigue off you. They've been absolutely fantastic really pleased with those a uh, little difficult some of the technical lanes when you put your leg down they catch your leg but fundamentally they've been absolutely fantastic uh, clutch lever i run the 2012 450 xc lever uh, fits the master cylinder and is about an inch shorter but that's that's that gives me that control i require um, on and off road and still be able to grip hold on onto the handlebars um, this bike, since I've bought it, I've done 10,000 miles. And to be fair, other than chain sprockets, brake pads, a front brake disc, um, one wheel bearing on the front, but I replaced the pair. All I had to do to this is just servicing. Um, I've heard so many horror stories. I've read so many. I've seen pictures of disasters. My bike has been fantastic, but I do maintain this. Every time I ride it, I clean it, I go through it before my next ride. When I did the big trip, I did have a split radiator. Um, why, I don't know. So I have had to put a radiator on as well. But I wouldn't call that a reliability problem. I would call that wear and tear, maybe something damaged it. Um, it, it, it could have been a stone, anything. But it, you know, re regardless of that, the motor for me, so far has been, touch wood, <laughs> really, really good. Reliable, always starts, 
runs, does everything it, it, it should do. Um, but I suppose you never hear all the stories about, oh, how great a bike is. You always hear the, the horror stories, but this has been so far 17,200 miles on it now. It has been superb. Um, what else can I say about the bike? Oh, it's got the KTM radiator protector on. Um, that I think is a must. It, uh, it's basically a steel brace that goes all the way around the radiator. Um, so if you have a side impact, you're not gonna crush it in. Um, venture spec, case covers. And I do actually have the Rally Raid twin tanks that go on the front, um, giving me an extra nine liters. But so far I haven't actually used them. They were for my trip to Morocco that was canceled earlier on in the year. So hopefully if I manage to go next year, they will be fitted and it will give me a range of around about 320, 350 miles, which um, will be plenty. You know, if, if I run low, I'm, I'm sure if I run low, I'm going to be <laughs> well and truly lost in the Sahara Desert. But this is basically my heavily modified um, 2015 KTM 690 Enduro R. Now, if you liked what you see on my page, click subscribe, click the notifications bell, and if you like this video, click like. I will be posting more on my bike uh, in the future. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon.